Hey, 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 whack people. This is the OCT Octavius Hay, and I want to thank you for tuning in to our page today. We greatly appreciate it. If you are listening to the podcast, you can also find it on Podbean. The link will be in the description. And if you listen to our music, you can also listen on SoundCloud and DatPiff. Both links will be in the description also. And as always, please remember to like the video, leave a comment, and to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that notification button so you're informed every time we drop new content. Now enjoy this whack wisdom. I am whacking off. to me yeah. talk whack to me talk whack to me yo 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 hello everybody what's up whack people okay <laughs> thank you so much for listening Um, I hope everything is amazing for everyone as always. I am the Honorable OCT Octavius Hay, alongside with my co-host, the Effortless E-Rob. What is up, Wack World? (laughs) What is up indeed, man? And you are listening to the Wackcast Podcast. E, how you doing today, man? I am feeling good, you know. Capricorn season, Christmas time. Are they capping out here? Yeah. You know, there's always something to cap about in the cap season, isn't it? I got always my cap on so. now, man. You, 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 you definitely cap it. Oh, that's, that's whack, man. <laughs> 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 All right, man. Were you ready to talk whack today? Let's talk whack to Let's them. do it. Talk whack. All right, man. So let's go ahead and start. This is old, but we had the clip show last week, so we didn't discuss this. And I was really like, last week was really into this a lot. The every rapper in the world versus academics on Clubhouse, man. He's catching his uh, his flag, right? Everything. It's like this is a long time coming. This was a build up to get to this point. I feel like a lot of niggas on there was just they wanted they couldn't wait to get to talk to him. This is everything mm-hmm. they've been feeling for years. They wanted to say to him, and now they was getting the opportunity. So, um, I guess first and foremost, man, I guess the big part of that conversation was what he had with me. And a lot of what Meek was saying, I know you listened to it too. What did you think about that conversation, the back and forth? Well, like I said, I feel like Meek is just in a a low spot kind of right now. It felt like he could have been reaching for attention, but at the same time, this had been ongoing for a long time, and this was on a lot of people's mind. He's saying what a lot of people have felt, and and, uh, I think Ag has to kind of face the music a little bit on some of these situations, because... He says things on on his on doing his content, and then real things in the street happen. Like it's people getting hurt and whatnot, stuff like that's going on, and like they're blaming him. But do you think that that's fair for them to blame him for what other people are doing? It's, it takes more than just that to happen, cause he's getting it. He's getting information and just reposting what he sees and, and and whatnot. So I don't think it's all his fault, but. He's put in a bigger lens, and even their direct quote was adding fire to the flame or adding gas to the fire, something along those lines. I mean, maybe that's true, but do you think that if Axe stopped doing it today, that a lot of those, do you think that people would stop shooting each other and stop fighting each other? And you think that, you think other people would stop posting too? You think Axe leading, making everybody else who also has blogs and stuff post the same stuff to him? You think that everybody's just gonna stop? And it's all, it's all Axe. Axe the only one. And if we stop acting, we stop everything. A violence is over. No, World peace. That ain't, <laughs> obviously, that's, that's not going to be the, the thing. But at the same time, you're you're adding more than what it could be. Like, it could get settled there, but now they see it. Now the world knows. Like, now, look at, look at when I'm saying things get expanded and we got to talk about it now and it gets to the level that we're talking. It could just stay. It could have got squashed or not even been a thing. But because right. 
X got the platform. What's DJ Academics? I'm talking about motherfucking shit. <laughs> and uh, we got some shit. More shit. But you know you have an act bias though, man? You don't like act for some reason? I mean... You wanna fight that nigga? I would love to fight that nigga. <laughs> oh, okay. It's but, No look, reason. He, you know, this is what he does, alright? And uh... Take a step. This is that's is how he's got his name to be what it is. I mean, he's got some music. I don't know it, All right? I think it's more like a comedy thing. Though. I think it's well. I don't know. I think he drops actually might either drop a project soon or has already dropped one. So he found his lane in um I guess this this like this era of, of these newer rappers and, and you say he did some. Doing some some stuff in the streets that was bad, but he also putting some people and getting stuff known that we wouldn't have attention that we wouldn't be looking at, you know. That's true. Academics has put on a lot of artists, though, but just speaking on their music and stuff, he's put on a lot of guys. Talk about the people that I w- would have never even known existed. Now, I didn't listen to their music, but you know his real hardcore fans might go ahead and listen to that now since Ax talking about it. Um, my take on the, with the academic thing is like, yeah, of course, when you reporting on negative th- things and you rely on that, well, I don't know if you should say rely, but you do use that as part of your platform. Um, maybe you are at the very least because more people are seeing it because you p- posted it. You're embarrassing that person to where they feel like maybe they wouldn't have responded before, but now they feel like they have to respond because they feel like the world is laughing at them. So from there, I understand what, what Meek was talking about. But I have to say that for Meek to be as angry at Ak as Meek is, I, I have to agree with what Ak was saying, where Meek's anger is mostly coming from personal issues they have with each other. Because academics is not the only person that's posting anything. And on top of that, academics, he's not digging through the dirt and, and trying to, you know, get these new stories that nobody's heard of. He just reposts what other people have said. A lot of times he reposts stuff late after other people have already talked about it so act you just can't turn around like i i don't understand why i got this big to why everybody's ganging up on act ultimately who you need to be ganging up on are the people who are doing the things that they shouldn't be doing and if y'all want to be talking heavy with somebody why don't y'all talk heavy with these gangsters who are out here t- talking about shooting this and shooting that instead of the nigga who says he's a pussy and sits sit down on his computer all day playing video games. and this is why i feel like the timing of this from meek it's such a key. When we're just talking about he can't come to Philly, can't do this and that, and just got, you know, st- street passes revoked or whatever. Yeah. And now he's on here. It, may, I, it just seems like he's trying to clear his own name up through all of this. Well, I, no, but maybe, maybe. And, and he what he he did talk about the the Philly thing, the Bannon thing, um, which kind of brings me to one of the things that Axe said later on after the call when he was on his Twitch talk reflecting on the call of how Meek just lied he told it or just said like he said he did something uh said he posted stuff about the the boy uh, the pound side pop who was too banned Meek and he was like I never did that and he was just talking about how every nobody seemed to care about that nobody seemed to care about the facts he brought they just wanted to care they just wanted him to respond to what Meek said even if what Meek said wasn't what he did you know, I will say the nature of it when they were all there, he couldn't really get the words out. They need better mediators than, than Twenty One Chefs, man. Like, Twenty One was trying, man. He was bringing, some, he was actually bringing some common sense into it. Yeah, but it was kind of one-sided. It was. They weren't yeah. letting, they weren't letting him get his points off and whatnot. And I don't even like him. I can't believe I'm right here on him, but I have to. I have to just play the neutral. Like, man, this is not. This is one-sided. They're letting me say everything, pretty much. Now you know what was funny when Meek said, um, what did he say? He said, um, you know, you talking about if I punch you, if I punch you, you gonna call the police? Like he, like he got mad at Axe. He's like, I'm like, nigga, you just said you gonna punch me in the face. How you gonna get mad at that man? Cause he wanna call the cops. <laughs> it was just funny stuff like that was going on. But um, you know, kudos to uh, academics for for holding in there and and staying on and doing that and and feeling comfortable with defending his side. And I and I will say, I I probably lean more towards Act. I do think he bears some responsibility, but I think he's willing to admit that and acknowledge that and listen to other people and grow and change. You know, everybody complained about his, his him talking about the war in Chirac and making a series about it. He stopped doing it. Um, and, you know, uh, like he said, at, at one point he was only covering like the positive artists or mostly, not only, but mostly covering positive artists. 
and people were saying he not covering the real nigga. So I think really when you look at those rappers who really had a problem with him, I feel like they're mad at him because he didn't do what they wanted him to do. Because he even says he says like Meek and his team wanted me to post stuff. So how is it now I'm the worst thing ever? But you want when it was beneficial to you, you wanted to use me, but then you saw that you couldn't use me now, I'm like the devil. Why would you want to work with the devil? Well, he's got a platform and he's built it up to this point doing what he does. And there's people that love him for it, and there's people that don't like him for it. So you gotta just take it for what it is. Yeah, you do. Um like I said, at the end of the day, I know you think that I think that academics is like my, you think he's my family or something. Because <laughs> I be defending him. But I'm not, I don't even watch his videos. I just defend him because I, the dude is just doing, he making his money, he hustling, he ain't hurt nobody, he sit around. You can say his videos hurt people. All right, well, you know, I don't think that's his intent. And I don't think you can put that 100% on him. That's just my opinion. I think you can put something on him and say maybe you shouldn't cover it this way or that way. But as he showed, as he, as he showed in that in that, in, that, in that clubhouse thing, he's more than willing to listen to, to people's suggestions and try to grow and learn and be better. And plus, we need to remember at the same time, act because you got you got like Charlemagne, who's who's not who's a little bit nicer to act than most people. And you got like the the you got Ebro in them, and you got a lot of people that like to bash academics. And these are older guys, but they forget that act started like in his twenties. He's you know he's starting this brand new. He did, he just coming into this. All this fame off of being on the internet. He didn't go through the proper channels that you guys did and have to go through the celebrity rankings to be able to have your voice matter. He just got on his his laptop and said, I'm about to just do stuff. Of course, I'm, I'm pretty sure he has some connections, but it was really just him as a young guy. So give him a chance to grow and, and, and mature more and learn more and do better. And we're seeing him do that because the way he does handle you know things. So of course, he drinks a lot, so he, sometimes he do stupid stuff, but... When he's sober, he's like that conversation, he can, you can talk to him. Well, I'll, I'll just leave it at this, man. All these people wouldn't be saying all this stuff about you for no reason. Take it into consideration. It ain't just one person. This is coming from a, a lot of different outlets saying that, man, you need to probably check what you're saying on some of this stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Cause, because the thing is, like, in theory, I agree with that. But then I'm like, we, we don't really do that much different from a lot of other people. Or and some people were. Some people actually try to l find stuff on you. There's some people you shouldn't just talk talk post on at all now. Like you shouldn't even affiliate it with. But like, the shade room does post everybody. Nobody get mad at the shade room. Uh, see, you can't. Academics is one person. The shade room. Who's the one shade room person? It's a bunch I'm of people sure, running that shit. I'm sure whoever in the industry can find a head person. And they won't go to. It won't go to one person. It goes to one big. Entity. I know, but if you and get that, the and that was a, that was another one of the beefs. Like your DJ academics. I know you got a group of people, but it goes back to the one person. You know what I'm saying? I thought that was an escapist lane. That that. Who cares if it's one? The issue. It, the issue isn't that he's DJ academics. It posted. It's it, it's what he's posted. So if you're mad about what he's posting, it shouldn't matter if it's one person or if it's a, a organization. It's not about the person posting it, right? It's supposed to be about what they're posting okay, causing it's issues. Like, but it's like you have the uh, the enemies identified. You got the you got the villain identified. But at, again, at some of these points, if that was their argument was because it's you, I don't like you, then that's fine. But their argument wasn't that. Their argument was you are posting bad things. So it doesn't matter if it's one person posting a bad thing. Two people or ten people or five hundred people. If you're mad at the post, you need to be mad at the post all the time. Man. So that's why I was like, that's that don't even make no sense to what you're arguing. You're not arguing that you're mad at academics so much so that you're arguing you're mad at him because of his but the post hurt people. So that post that hurts people when act posts it is gonna hurt it should still then hurt people when the shade room posts it, because it's the same thing. If a nigga, if you say, ah, I, I just, if you, who do we go, okay, but just like they went at Act, and they could identify Act, Act yeah. get on Clubhouse, Shade Room get on Clubhouse, who is it, it ain't just one person, you see what I'm saying right there, I see what you're saying <laughs> right there, but again, that, that argument isn't about, that argument is about the post, so if you, if you can't get one person, or if you can't say Shade Room, you know, you can, you know, okay, you don't gotta say Shade Room get on Clubhouse, you can just be like, hey, we need to boycott Shade Room, it, Stop following it should room. just be at Get off right. It room. should be whoever originally Yo, posted I don't even know who but on Shade I think Room the, But we not rocking with you We not following you We not liking you Everybody stop now That's what you do Whoever originally posted Probably was the people who we had the issue with and With that we don't know Like I don't really hear that side of the story You're Like well, there's a whole side we're not even hearing I don't know man 
look, I don't know at the end of the day is they, they it seemed like it seemed like Ack would move the goalposts and then they would find a different well actually really what I'm mad about is this now because he he correctly answered that. Well I didn't he's like I didn't do that. Well, but really what I'm mad at is this. It's like, well, every time you're gonna keep changing, I feel like it was like two or three things that they end up becoming with well what the real issue is. This is why it felt like a reach too the whole time. Like we, what are you here for? Go make a song or something. Go yell. Go yell at the mic, man. <laughs> <laughs> But it was, I mean, it's what it is, it is what it is, man. We right there with it. And um, I really want to, you know, touch touch on Meek. Uh, you kind of hit it earlier when we talked about, you know, the stuff with Philly. And, you know, me and you was kind of discussing how he seems to just be really good at catching L's, man. Yeah. He seems to be really good at catching L's. Um, you know, like he tried to do something, like you said, he tried to do something positive in Philly and try to get all the people beefing to stop beefing and get record deals. It's like the headlines on about music. Uh, yeah. You get a kid's $20 for water and everybody call him a cheesecake. Stuff like that. But, uh, I mean, let me see. But I, I don't like Meek Mill, man. I don't like Meek Mill, and I'm not talking about his rap skills. I'm talking about him as a person. I don't know Meek Mill as a person, so the only thing I can know is what he showed me. And when I see somebody do something, I'm like, ah, that's cool. I, I, I don't like it. I don't, he talk about character, but I don't think he has it. Mm. At least not the way he thinks he does. You know, I looked at the discography whenever you showed me we were talking about Meek, and a lot of his songs, 2014, the stuff that I even know him for a little bit, all were have features. He doesn't have very many songs where it's Meek by himself. Are you one of those dudes? He have features. He have too many no, features. No, it, he only has features. No, there's no singles. A solo, a song where it's just him. I mean, no solo this one for you. Tupac, Back, uh, Amen. The songs that I really like, oh, that's me. And it's always somebody right there to like, I like the song or I'll listen to it because some, because of the feature, man. Oh my God, man. Me did his thing in a Tupac Back. I like the man. You like, oh, you like Drake verse? Hey, I, and I like the beat. That is a catchy song. All yeah. right, look at that, boy. Look, you getting you closer and closer to that leaf every day now. E. I don't hate Drake. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> in fact, <laughs> in fact, for a while. I don't know. I don't know. Well, you, you wouldn't know, I guess. Can't say nothing about that. But no, nah, but, but with me though, I mean, like I said, to me, it's not with, with me. It's not about the music. It's just like the way he is, like the things he's done. So, for instance. Um, him and Safari was real cool, and they used to go, you know, they used to, what you call them, the motorbikes, whatever they do, that that me like do, they used to do that all the time with each other, and be chilling, and so that was like, his, even if they weren't like the best friend, they were cool, they hung out, yeah. he snitched on Safari, said to, to Nikki, said to, told her that Safari was cheating, and that's how he got with Nikki, that's supposed to be the dude you cool with, yeah. you talk about a rat nigga, you talk about, but you're not, but that's, but you know, that's, that's cool to you? It's just so many things that hit his character, you know? That's yeah. just another example, but there's just so many. Yeah, it's, 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 it's um, his relationship with Wale, you know, he he got, he got went on that ramp and went off on Wale because he said Rock, Wale didn't post his album, and then Wale said, I did post your album and you didn't post mine, but I didn't care, and then they made up, and then a little while later, Wale was on the Breakfast Club talking about like, you know, he wished that they could be closer, whatever, and like he wanted to be there for him during the Drake situation. And again, Meek Mill went off on him, called him loser, lame, you not MMG, all that stuff. And like that's supposed to be a man, like you can't call him, you gotta air him out and make him look bad when he when he ain't done nothing to you. And I'm I'm kinda looking at it in hindsight now. He's been in the game from twenty twelve until now ish around that time and it's just been little thing after little thing over time. Like, oh I don't care about that or this, you know, the Wild Eight thing is another example, but and over time, you gotta I just gotta look at it in totality now. Like, bro. And now they saying you can't go to the hood and stuff like that and Oh man. Nah, yeah, no, but like even like two other things real fast about about that. Oh so that's why he got mad at Drake originally and, and wanted to say you, knew right, you don't write your rhymes because Drake did, he said Drake didn't post his stuff. And then, uh, who else he got mad? He got mad, uh, he, he, was, he was mad at academics for not posting him. He actually, uh, you know, said that in the interview. He got some of these vlogs that don't post me like academics. I think, that, I think I need to say this. I know Meek will probably never hear this, but um, just for anybody in general, not just Meek, nobody owes you anything. You can't be mad at somebody else because they didn't do something for you. They don't owe you anything. You can ask. And if they do, that's cool. 
if somebody just does it voluntarily, that's cool. But to be that upset, nobody owes you anything. And I'm so surprised that this dude, you know, he grew up in the streets rough with the with the with the, with the braids on him, because he said he, he acts so entitled and so privileged that where he deserves things. And maybe it's what Axe said of how everybody treats him like he God. Mm. Maybe and maybe that's why he does that. But I mean, I I think I think he I think he's a, a whiner, a complainer, um, and he try to. I know he said he's on drugs and he was doing all this stuff, but still you don't you you know you don't put your you don't put your people down. And if you do got an issue, you call him and talk to him, and you and then you you, you snitching on your man. So you can get his girl like i can't i can't uh, rock and this sounds like in a tag if he, real shit he's really commercially successful so let me just first put that on the yeah. table but when it comes to this character and then all these other little things that happen inside of that man i think it's just time we got to check that and just see that for what it is man like yeah no definitely and i, and I do like some i like i like beat music i like some of his songs when i hear them like you said like i like i like a, a lot of his stuff i like the house party was like the, the first meek song i really got with um, so I don't have no issue with his music, and I don't know, maybe Meek is better than what he looks like, you know, to the public, but all I can go off is what I see, and I've seen a lot of stuff I don't like, and kind of make me, you know, a little iffy on him, on dude. Um, so that's it, yeah, no no hate towards Meek, though, just like, stuff like that, I think we need, that, stuff like that needs to be addressed. Um, do you think that Meek Mill is cold? last thing about me you think musically you think that he's cold out here in the streets we don't like you said we don't really talk about music we he have, hasn't had a song that sit for me in a while the last song yeah was the drake song the day man no the uh uh what's it that's another 10 feet now and then oh, and then i'm out i don't know i might be mixing them up but it's the um it's the one with um I forgot how it go. <laughs> but it, it was a big song. And I think that just kind of, I ain't got nothing. And maybe it's that about was what, a year or two? <laughs> one ish. I don't know. <laughs> You'll know it if you hear it. It was like it was like one or two years ago. Now I got to know. Now I, I have to find figure out what this song was. You go, um. And Drake had like that cold verse. Uh, oh, okay. What's, uh, what's, what's not? That's a throw it in the mop. Just to blow it in the mall doesn't mean that we involved. He had the one feature with Jay, another feature. He had the feature with Jay Z though. What feature? Uh, like, what oh yeah, 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 yeah. That was yeah. that, that, that was, was hard. the last thing that I've heard. Like, that okay. was hard too, yeah. But wait, forget the Drake feature. He had a song that was his last hit. That was like a year or two ago. But yeah, other than that, he not really hot like that out here. So I think Meek is at a stage now where he has to, I guess, rediscover who he is because. He's still claiming street, but he also like supposed to be so like pro, you know, the prison reform stuff and talking to these big money execs and stuff and trying to make change. So he's in a he's in a uh, you know crossroads, and I guess. He's trying to please everybody and it ain't working. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. Tune in, you know. We love all our black kings, man. So we no hate to meet, man. Uh, and speaking of black kings, let's talk about you know the king, I guess. You know, Wakanda forever. Uh, you know, uh, the character of T'Challa, played by the late great Chadwick Boseman. Uh, Marvel Studios has decided to retire the character rather than recast. Um, and I guess somebody else is going to be playing the, the, the you know, Black Panther. So there's going to be another character playing Black Panther. Uh, the character of T'Challa is, I don't know if they're going to kill him off, or just say that he passed away, or, or they're just going to ignore him. But do you think that that was the right move, E? Do you think that they should have recasted him, or it was right to just get rid of him? I think the studio should do whatever they do, but just make sure it's done tastefully, all right? Tell a good story, you know. It was very impactful, made a lot of money in the, uh, the black community and what, whatnot, so like, just make it be tasteful for that. And kill them off, send them off right. You don't want them in there. Just keep everything, keep it, keep it cool, man. I feel, yeah, I mean, I, I, I get that too, and I think, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I, I, I know it wasn't gonna be mad either way because no matter what they did, I know it was coming from a good place of them trying to figure out how best to respect Chadwick Boseman's legacy. But also, they have to, con- they, you know, they do have to continue the the franchise. So I'm not mad at it, but I I would say I would have rather liked them to recast with Denzel Washington's son now playing to Tyler. I think that he has a similar look. Not that they don't look alike, but. You know, dark skin. You know, they, you know they got, uh, what if he don't got the accent? Who was gonna have the accent? You know, yeah, you get you, They got me, billions of dollars in that company. They can hire a good accent coach, trainer. They got those. 
in Hollywood, teach him how to say the words. He, I'm sure he yeah, get it. If it don't hit, that'll be the first thing they call out. I know, right? This nigga do not sound like this. Not Wakanda. It'll be like, <laughs> not my T'Challa. They go, man, you know they is too. Black people be killing me. <laughs> they gonna crucify that man. It might end his career. But still, I, I think that it could work. Um, I haven't seen him. Um, I can't think of Denzel's son's name, but I haven't seen him in a lot of stuff. But the stuff I have seen him in, I've been impressed. I think he's a great actor. His career is definitely on the rise. So I think this would have been a good look for him. Uh, unfortunately, you know, they decided to go a different route. But well, I, I, like I said, I read a thing that said they were going to tell like some backstory of Wakanda. So like, I'm not really mad at that. Wakanda's like fantasy Africa. So like, I feel like there's a million, billion, gazillion, kajillion, kajillion, kajillion stories you could tell about that when we just tell me some backstory of, of, of that of a place like that yeah yeah I'm that I think they could I think you know just given the fact that they established that the Black Panther is like a mantle you get that's passed down to the next king you can go through like any time in history if you want to just tell random Black Panther stories of 18 1862 during the Civil War if the, if the Black Panther had anything to say about that or whatever you know, it's a lot of stuff you can do with that character so even though it's sad, it's unfortunate that um, the character's story was forced to end due to Chadwick Boseman's passing. Um, the future is still very bright in the Black Panther. You feel me, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, we're about to head out, y'all. I think that's all for that. Before, as far as the other topics, now before we do go, I do want to talk for a real fast minute. I'm not going to speak too long on this. Um, but talk about that money, money, money. <laughs> uh recently you know the house and the senate passed a new stimulus uh, uh, bill through the congress now donald trump at this time is is now saying that he um won't sign it unless we get two thousand dollars on there so he wants to increase it to two thousand from but um the bill that they passed was for six hundred dollars six hundred dollars so <laughs> So, we got one check in March or April, right at that time, for $1,200 and extra benefits for $600 for, uh, for unemployment that expired in June. Um, now, in a, in a time where unemployment is, is record high, where um, small businesses are closing down, um, there are there are food line there are food truck lines whatever you call it to, for people just lining up just to get food that are, that are going that's going out miles or going out soaring down. Um, there are people people are struggling. People are really really struggling. And in a time like that, you have a Congress that I can't even say they really I mean they did debate, but it wasn't even one a main issue for them. Um, Congress that, that 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 had to dig their heels in the in the dirt um, to be forced to help the citizens that they were supposed to represent. I think that's very disrespectful. I think that everybody who who is able to needs to start looking at who the people that represent the, their their representatives in Congress. They need to start looking at what they stand for and if their ideals match yours because. We can't be put in a position where our tax dollars are controlled by people who don't want to help us with our tax money when we're in a pandemic. You know, they want to tell you, oh, you know, we've got to worry about the budget. we got to worry about this and that. Yet they'll constantly give trillions of dollars in tax cuts to billionaires and billion dollar corporations. They'll give millions of our, to- our tax dollars, millions of dollars in subsidies to billion dollar corporations every year but they tell us we can't get one measly twelve hundred dollar check and they when they when they want to drop it down at six hundred dollars for a check one time check and only an extra three hundred dollars in unemployment when people are starving in this country and they got the nerve to walk around so smugly like they did something or, or look down at people for, for needing help from the people they elect to help them i'm done with that man i'm not playing i'm and it's not just the republicans and the and the, and the the central Democrats I'm talking to. I'm talking to the progressive members in Congress too. Y'all need to start fighting harder. Y'all need to take advantage of what y'all got. Y'all, you progressive Democrats have the opinions that the majority of Americans want. You need to start capitalizing on that, utilizing people, run that bully pulpit, and start forcing these politicians to answer why they don't want to help people 
why they had to fight, why they had to dig that, why they had to be pulled, kicking and screaming, digging their, their hands in the, in the ground to stop from helping us. And when they did, they want, they, they only were able to do, only want to do it if they can give us even less. When even more people are dead and even more cases are showing, we get even less. That's disrespectful. It's unacceptable. We are their leaders. They are not our leaders. We are their leaders. We're their bosses. We pay their salary. We decide who stays, who goes. We do. And they need to start respecting that and they need to start fearing it. That's all I got to say on that. Yeah, this should be going the other direction. And that, that ain't the way. <laughs> more power to the people. Definitely, definitely, man. So, yeah. Um, anything else, Steve? That's it, man. Happy holidays, man. Hey, man, happy holidays to everybody. 2020, it's a little bit longer. We can say, talk about another, something else. <laughs> the next one. We'll see what happens next, y'all. But yeah, but hey, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in today. Yeah. You know, we appreciate it as always here on the Whack Cash Podcast. Um, I guess if there's nothing else, he says you got nothing else. So we are whacking off. Whack off. Oh, ah. It's the Whack Cash. Podcast, yeah. Talk whack to me, talk whack to me, yeah. Talk whack to me, talk whack to me, talk whack to me, yeah. Talk whack to me, talk whack to me, yeah. Talk whack to me, talk whack to me.